Hello everybody, welcome to Eddie and Jimmy on this beautiful Monday morning in Melbourne. You look out at the blue sky, Jim, and the sunshine here at the beautiful MCG and you wonder why everyone's protesting and tearing the, the city apart. Yeah, it's a different <laughs> couple world. of blocks up the road anyway. Can, can I use a football term quickly? Please. If you can't get a kick today, you just can't get a kick. You just can't get a kick. Isn't it beautiful though yeah. out there? The, there's something about the MCG even when it's empty that uh, just evokes great emotion. Um, I don't know whether it's because you know, you've been out there and won Brownlow medals and premiership medallions more importantly. But uh, I've been coming here since I was a little boy. It, it captivated me the first time I ever walked into this place. It was just unbelievable. I couldn't. It was like Disneyland met every other great experience when I walked in over there in the old stand. But it's just a, it's an amazing place. It is, and it's you know? right, right in the heart of our city. Yeah, and you know we come two, three times a weekend, and you never get sick of coming no, to MCG, never, do you? So never. that's the upside mm. on a couple of sad things we'll get to in a few moments' time. You're watching, if you want to watch us, on Nine Now and YouTube, so please make sure you join us on those other platforms. Um, thanks to Crown. Yep. And it's great to see Crown firing up again, Crown Resorts, where things get interesting. And uh, they've got a whole new marketing plan, and, you know, we we'll leave aside uh, the, the betting plenty of things to do down at crown go down there enjoy the tony jones food court for example <laughs> <laughs> and of course our friends lexus of blackburn andrew moore i was out there the other day this new car that we're giving away mm. is it a beautiful car i, I drove past one actually on yeah. the way here magnificent looking vehicle catches the, your eye mate not only that but um the great the great car for in and around the city it's got everything inside but there's actually a bit more room to it than uh, it looks as well. Mm. So it's a fantastic car. Get into that one now. All right, uh, Jimmy, just before we start, yep. um, uh, we, we should just touch on the uh, tragic events of Sydney. Um, uh, I don't think anyone hasn't been moved by this, but the ripple effect of what's happened um, with Ash Good's uh, murder, uh, Kerry Good, you know, long-time friend of mine, uh, football associate, you know, part owner of Gold Trip and Racing. He's been a massive racing guy. If you go anywhere near the Sorrento Hotel, you see him and Mark Dawson and Wayne Richardson, the former Collingwood captain, always there having a beer. Everyone just walks around. Everyone knows everybody, in, and particularly in footy. And our hearts just go out to uh, Kerry and Denise and all the family. Uh, it's just a horrible situation. And, of course, you know, it, you can't help but, you know, it's the ripple effect. You know, I know John Singleton, not well, but well enough. He was kind to me when I was in Sydney, and I'll never forget that. And uh, his beautiful daughter, Dawny, and four other people, and and the and the ripple effect there. But I think it's just the assault on all of us that when people go to a shopping centre and they're pushing a pram, you, you think that's the Australian, not the dream. That's just what we should be able to do every Saturday afternoon. It's just just yeah. horrible. But I think, you know, well, I'll get your thoughts on it first. Yeah, of all. I, I think you're touching on where I'm going. Ed. Uh, yeah. The impact or the... I think everyone can identify with some sort of thread from out of the tragedy. So yeah. for me personally, like yourself, uh, I know friends who who know Kerry Good's daughter, Ash Good. And yeah. so there's that impact. But, you know, from a real personal point of view, mum with a little baby, uh, you know, yep. my partner and little baby, she was just at Chadston here in Melbourne only a couple of days ago. And I think the thing that scares a lot of people is the randomness of it. Yeah. And I think that frightens the life out of people. Uh, and I know there's a lot of commentary around today. I've been listening to Tom Elliott this morning as well, and he's talking about should people carry pepper spray, etc. I don't think that would have made any difference. Mm. Um, certainly, you know, maybe the, the guards need to have something more than a pencil in their pocket at these places, but we don't want to overarm people either because, you know, a lot of people who are working as guards, you know, are working as baristas or working as taxi drivers, it's, you know, a lot of people just aren't trained for this situation. I think we always say that. I think without turning a footy podcast into something uh, else this morning, but I just have a real worry about um, the incidence of mental health in our community. I've watched this completely change. I've been around long enough to remember when we used to have... Uh, uh, mental institutions where people would be committed. Um, you know, now social mores will say that's not the right way to go, but like everything in life, the pendulum swings too far too often. And then you have a lot of people with mental health issues who then uh, gravitate to illicit drugs and that exacerbates the problem. And just at the moment, I just, I just get a feel that uh, the people who are the good people in society, the law-abiding mm -hmm. citizens, uh, seem to be uh, demonised for having values that actually are important in a society 
And uh, I think we just need to recalibrate ourselves on that sort of stuff. As I said, today's not the day to do it. We're still mourning for what's happened in Sydney. But I think there's a bigger thing. And even you know, the protests in Melbourne today, just and we've seen home invasions and carjackings. I mean, th- these were things that five years ago were unheard of in this, this city. And now don't even get a run on the news. No, everything's so, heightened at the moment. Yeah, it is. And I think we have to sort of just, you know, have a look and decide what sort of society we want to have and then get on with it. Anyway, yeah. let's get back to the footy yeah. uh, because if there's one thing that footy does in sport, relief. Yes. gives you relief, you know, and that's why so many people are saying, can we just play footy without having to get a lecture every time we play? Yep. Um, so let's let's get stuck into it. Uh, but before we do that, um, I had a funny weekend. Oh, really? Well, no pies. Well, that's great. It's great so for football. First, no, it's, well, it's not. <laughs> I think we showed. There was no, no, no big – well, there was a couple of big crowds. The stuff then at Marvel was good. The MCG was pretty much empty. Thursday night was good. But uh, – uh, I, I, I want to. It's, it's interesting because Channel Seven's uh, right in the hitting zone at the moment. They they made another howler of a mistake over the weekend by naming the wrong person in relation to the uh, to the uh, murder up at uh, up at uh, the uh, uh, up at Westfield in Sydney, and of course Bruce Lerman's happening probably as we speak. Yeah. So there's there's a bit going on in all that situation. So can I give Channel Seven some relief? I watched their racing with Bruce McAvaney and Jason Richardson mm. and Emma Friedman and all the team on Saturday. Um, and I was flicking around, so I'm watching the footy. But I was watching the racing and I was sitting there. I was, I was being very 21st century, if you like, Jim. I had my pad going and I was watching the uh, Australian Athletics Championships out of Adelaide uh, in the build-up to the Olympic yep. Games. And Bruce McAvaney, he called the athletics on Thursday, Friday, the races on Saturday, and then called the athletes on Sunday he's again. He's incredible, Bruce. Uh, he's, he, <laughs> he's just fantastic, yeah. Bruce. And uh, David Colbert did a fantastic job, and uh, uh, Thames and Lewis was sensational. They'll both be calling on Nine's coverage of the Olympic Games. I did try to get Bruce. I think I can say it now. I tried to recruit Bruce. I got seven across the line. Sorry, got nine across the line, but it was probably a bit too far for, mm. for seven in that situation. Anyway, my point being... The, the coverage of the races on Saturday and the races themselves with Pride of Jenny's race and uh, Circle of Fire winning uh, was as good a sports afternoon as you ever get for broadcasting. And uh, I'll, I'll get the names. I think it's uh, uh, the, uh, like, uh, Hall Lacey, who might be Dyson Hall Lacey, the former Fitzroy president's son, or Rick Hall Lacey's related to the Hall Lacey family, who's the producer on Channel 7, and uh, I need to find out the name. But uh, it was fantastic. So... I would just say that expert commentary, not too many um, people who know this stuff, but understanding the history of the turf. You know, when Bruce McEvaney said Pride of Jenny's race was as good a race as anything he's ever seen, it actually gives a bit of historical yeah, context, it does. given the fact that Bruce has you know, watched probably every race since 1970. Yeah. Um, I was talking to my son, Xander, who works in the Nine Newsroom, and he said exactly that, you know, for a 21-year-old. I said, well, if Bruce reckons it's yeah. something that's special to use a Bruce. Yeah, it gives it credibility. It gives it credibility. So I, I just, you know, we, 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 we sometimes critique uh, people in the media and the likes. So I think it's important to say yeah. that that Saturday um, racing coverage was as good as anything as you'd ever see. Can I just make a comment on, on Bruce? Uh, when I first came into the commentary box at Channel 7, the first thing he did is walk up and goes, hi, I'm Bruce McAvee. And I'm like... Yeah, yeah, I know. I've grown up with your voice across every sport that I've ever watched. But the first thing he said, how can I help you? And so he was like very yeah. giving. He goes, where can I help you? Yeah, where can I get you in? And you think, this is Bruce McAvaney doing it. Yeah. And then just on your point of racing, I, I like to follow the races as well. I'm just watching them as um, when they come up. I said, what, what do you think about the races tomorrow, Bruce? And he, went, he took like a breath in. And I think he went through the first nine races in Adelaide, yeah. the first six or seven races in Melbourne, and he could tell me every single horse, their form. But the important thing is there's a guy who just is relentless yeah. in his preparation. He can tell you everything from the colour to the background. Yeah. But he does it for every sport. He gives the sport it, it the respect it, it deserves. It does. Yeah. And, and it's amazing. I mean, I, I go back a bit further with Bruce. Um, I was in the Channel 10 newsroom when he arrived. <laughs> And no one knew who the hell he was. So this was before Bruce McAvaney was Bruce, <laughs> Bruce McAvaney. McAvaney yeah. uh, and he came over to Channel 10 in those days to cover the 1984 Olympic Games, ostensibly, mm. and to start at the newsroom. So it was his breakout from Adelaide. Sandy Roberts had come from Adelaide and was doing great things at Channel 7. Bruce came to Channel 10 with the Olympic Games. And uh, he was quirky, even back then, mm. because he could, couldn't type and refused to learn. <laughs> you know, that, was the, that was the thing I couldn't get. He refused to learn. And he'd write out all his scripts yeah. uh, by hand and uh, dictate. And Bruce would walk along around the Channel 10 
calling Phantom Races. You know, and <laughs> he's just like, he's, you know, and he was such an infectious personality. But I was only a young kid, and Bruce came to my 21st. And uh, so I'm, I reckon I'm 20 when he might have arrived. And Steve Quartermain had started around the same time, uh, around that time. So Quarter's about, he's about 23. Anyway, Bruce would be there. And suddenly, you know, when a new bloke comes into town, you're sort of having a look, you know. Not everyone was new to me. I'm just, you know, I'm still living in Broady. And, uh, but you looked at Bruce and, and you suddenly realised what research was mm. and professionalism was. But the greatest thing I'll always say about Bruce was exactly what you just said, Dunderline, and that is um, he is so warm of heart. Mm. He knows his position in life. He knows that he's the man mm. um, and he understands that. But he's never stood on the mark. Correct. He, is, mm. he brings you into the play. Mm. And I remember one time I was struggling doing a couple of live crosses when a live cross was huge, you know, from the tribunal. And I said I was 19 or 20 years of age and I was trying to wrote, learn things. And he grabbed me one day and he said, listen, Ed, he said, you can talk about footy for three days. <laughs> I said, I'll throw to you. Just tell me what's going on. You know it upside down. Put your, you know, keep your notes. But, you know, because that's one of the things mm. I see with the young reporters these days. They don't have notes. We'll always write it down. Because mm. you get done on the, you forget Bruce's name or something. That's where you make an idiot of yourself. You can fight your way through it. Anyway. I went from being almost banned from doing live crosses to being regarded as a breakthrough mm. moment as a young reporter, as, as a great live cross doer, yeah. as they, you know, we used to say in the business. And uh, yeah, it changed your life because he gave you a bit of encouragement at the right time. Took me to, took me to uh, London and to Vancouver and to Tokyo to call the footy in 86. We called the Battle of Britain game together. <laughs> encouraged me to call the VFA. And uh, yeah, he was he was Good fantastic. Man. Anyway, but the, I just thought the total racing package was excellent. Um, and in some ways, maybe they, they need to look at their racing coverage and adapt some of the things to the football coverage at the moment. It's a bit busy the footy coverage, from my humble opinion. But anyway, that's not to knock the footy so much. But uh, yeah, what do you think of the four pm game? <sighs> which day on a Sunday? Or on that? a Sunday. Sunday. So it used to be yeah. three twenty because it lead into the news. Yeah. But the four pm game, which Fox picks up. It's Fox. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. It's three o'clock if it's Channel 7 because it leads into the into news. the news, yeah. But that's what's happening. So, I mean, people haven't tweaked yet. Next year, Saturday's no free to wear on Saturday next year. You aware of that? Yeah, because of Fox. Yeah, so they've got the Fox Saturday. Get, get their hands on it. So, um, it's interesting. I mean, Thursday night's changed everything because uh, it's now broadened mm-hmm. it out. Thursday night is here to stay. Yep. So, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night on Fox. Um I haven't really thought about the four o'clock aspect to it other than, you know, it does get in the way of the news. Um, but uh, do, do, do you think... What do you think about it? You're, you're going somewhere. There. Give me a hint. No, no, I just... I like the three o'clock game. I like the four o'clock game. But I think with with news, I think the way the we, we consume news now, I think yeah. people consume news on their phone. Yeah. Like, I, I know it, it's still the biggest thing. It's, it's, seven, it's the, seven, it, nine. And seven, I mean, it's the highest rating show on television. Yeah, but... Uh, Thank you. I just think the four o'clock game is fantastic. The four o'clock game is built for at the home, at home, not for the yeah. At, at well, that's, that's why the four o'clock game should be out of Perth every week. Yeah, because it's it's two o'clock or one. Yeah, o'clock, it's perfect for it? yeah. perfect for Perth time, mm. and it becomes you know that fits into the lifestyle of Perth as well. Yeah, go the footy on a Sunday. They get afternoon. a day game. It's nice. It's great. I, mean, I I always thought that maybe even Gold Coast could be a Sunday night special where. You know, everyone goes to the beach. Excuse me, I'm trying not to spill tea all over my hand. That's pretty hot. I did. I scored it myself on the weekend. I don't want to come back for seconds. Um, I always thought that that's that's where you could mix it up. That Sunday night in, if I was, uh, you know, running the Gold Coast, I'd like to have a Sunday night and turn it into a party night. Mm. Make it a young person sing. You know, have the after party type of vibe up there, yeah. and really make it good fun for for Brisbane. So there's there's a lot of marketing still in the fixture. Mm. I believe. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, Eagles. Yeah. Well, we tipped them, didn't we, go, last week? Eagles, go. Yeah. I always, uh, Eagle they, Rock. I remember... Well, they, um, they, they played Eagle Rock and they pulled Richmond's pants down. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... Uh, it's a little Have you got into that yet? Do you know that that's the thing now when Eagle Rock comes on and everyone drops their strides? No. You're not on that one? No, I keep my pants up. Well, well so do Eagle I, I must admit. But no, this, <laughs> is, this is the young the young go now, the university music festivals, etc. So yeah, when they play Eagle, when Eagle Rock comes on, pants go down. I didn't know. Didn't you know that? Now, I'm well, not cool anymore. Oh, well, I mean. well, that's it. They pull their Richmond's pants down. So <laughs> I wonder when you didn't res- <laughs> respond to my hilarious gag. Well, I remember it at um, Subiaco when you used to play there. And the, <laughs> whenever you play the Eagles or, or Freo, 
the fans get in where Subiaco used to get in really early, so they'd be there for the warm up. Yeah. So you'd get absolutely heckled during a warm up. I'm just taking some some practice shots on goal, but they'd always have this tune going in their head because remember their major sponsor for a while was SGIO. Yeah. They had the big thumbs behind the. That's it. Yeah. yeah they, they, those uh, messages uh, on hold. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah. And then they'd always play this tune, SGIO. Go, Eagles, go. And the thumbs that go like that. So I've always got it in my head. Every time the Eagles kick a goal, yeah. I've got this uh, tune playing. Great for the Eagles. Look, Richmond are definitely under man. They can't yeah. take a trick at the moment. You know, punt road. Poor Adam Uzo. He has players breaking arms and wrists Every for training. Other Someone, yeah. uh, Judson Clark's done an ACL. But the good thing was um, they got a win. You need that for Adam Simpsons because then a bit of positivity. He's being as positive as he can. But the win, wins help. And... Elliot Yo is playing as good a footy as he's ever been playing. The stats say that. The man who turned the tide. Go on, say his name. Harley Reid. How good is Harley Reid? They were. Uh, Richmond kicked the first four goals. Yeah. He started to win some contests, and then Jake the Snake Waterman. Yeah. Took eight contested marks. Well, Waterman. he had a terrible injury last year. Yeah. The, um, some gut colitis. Issues. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but Harley Reid. I mean, this is where you. you you know, you, you pull your hair out sometimes listening to some of the carry-on that goes on. I mean, this kid is an absolute star. Um, you know, and then, you know, Campbell Chester started kicking a yes. goal and getting it. These kids are... Don't forget, I don't think people realise how much of an impact COVID's had on, on these kids coming through. So I'm sort of right in the hitting zone. Campbell Chester used to stay at our place. He went to school with my sons. and In fact, it was quite uh, interesting over the weekend. Campbell kicked the goal to sort of... Ice the game, yep. if you like, for West Coast, and Sammy Berry kicked the winner for Adelaide Crows, uh, and uh, they're both boarders mm. who used to come and stay at our house, you know, all the time. So it was a big weekend. Mm. We, we had a, you know, it's funny when you've got those connections through, obviously outside of uh, the pies for me these days. But they're two ripping kids who missed their year twelve and year eleven years. In fact, the Campbell Chester was year eleven. He was uh, he missed eleven and twelve with COVID. Um, didn't they didn't play a lot of footy, no. and those kids are coming through. The, you know, the kids at Essendon as well. They they're, they're a bit behind where you'd normally be. Yeah, development eighteen months behind. Yeah, and yeah. don't forget, then it goes back a couple as well. So, the kid who was fourteen didn't play two years. 14, 15, Fair. 16, 15, 16. So there's a there's a little bit in that I think in players yeah. coming through. Uh, just diverting a bit. So Adam Uzo's year is just about cooked already. As far as finals are concerned, I'm, I'm yeah. not big on writing teams off at round five, but it's going to be hard from here. I reckon there's probably only two or three spots in the eight that are going to well, pick they're, up. They're running out of cattle. Yeah, well, they are. well, if you get beaten by West Coast, you, mm. you know you're struggling. Not a bad year to finish down the bottom mm. before Tassie and, and these things start to come into play. I, I think the, the thing, though, for Adam Uzo is the senior players are bought in. Like You yeah. see the way Bolton's playing. Martin's still cracking away. Vloston's playing some great footy. They're doing as good as they can. Look, yeah. they haven't turned the toes up either. Look, I know they got beaten. And no, West but they had Coast, to go. West Coast were stretching away at the end. But yeah. they've got no key position. And the injuries they've got, they're, they're not like one and two week injuries. The guys are out for six to eight weeks. Yeah, they're big plus. injuries. Yeah. Hmm. I know people used to say, oh, you can't use injuries as an excuse. I've always said, no, it's not an excuse. It's a reason. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't got players, well, you can't got play. no spine. So you can't pull up your socks if you're not wearing any, as yeah. Lou would say. Walter, Lynch, Gibkiss, Taranto. Yeah, well, like, all, all those blokes walking straight into their side. Walking any side. Mm. Uh, how's, how's your your boy Taylor? That Sam was, Taylor. It was pretty Sam sickening, Taylor, yeah. the, the collision. It, it looked really bad, but um, just got an update this morning. He, he's all fine. He's on the mend, but he'll miss probably the two games because the Giants the following week play on a Thursday night. Um, so he's right on that 12-day uh, band. Uh, the Ainsworth Petty taunting. Yes. I mean, uh, let's have a look. I mean, you know my position. I think that if you can't clean somebody up anymore or give them a, cl- or give them a whack, um, then you've got to stop taunting. Mm. You know, because I, I get sick of these fleas mm. coming up to people after they've missed a goal. I think it's bad sportsmanship. It does nothing for that. the look of the game. And it's... Uh, I, I blanch against anyone who says something's un-Australian because it's it's the catch-all for yeah. for, for a lot of people and, and sometimes bigots. But I just think it is un-Australian football in those situations to go up to somebody and get in their face knowing full well they can't whack you and there's no retribution coming your way. Um, so I, I made so this that's full stop. Now let's go to this incident because right, so I, I know you've got a different point of view. Yeah, because I made this point last night on, yeah. on the footy furnace. Now, I, for Melbourne supporters... I know Harrison Petty didn't make any complaints against Noel Answorth. I'm just pointing to the fact that there is a common denominator in all these situations. Do you think Petty's being Petty? It's Harrison Petty. Now, the, 
the line that I, I got taught as a kid, if you don't want to see clowns, don't go to the circus. Right, okay. Yeah. So it, if you don't want to be involved or you don't want your face being constantly put on camera, and he might say, I'm fine with it. But the reason why we keep getting all these clashes, with the Lions in particular, but I've seen it with other clubs, if you gob off... Is he gobbing off? He, well, we we highlighted a number of instances last right. night. He, he went Link McCarthy. He's rubbing his elbow in a... Um, yeah. somebody else's head you know Answorth bites back to something that petty yeah, uh, yeah. says if if you don't want to be a part of it don't start the shit yeah okay well so, I, I, well if that's the case then then fair enough but but, but, but okay, at the same okay, time Melbourne, I don't but I don't like the you know the but Melbourne supporters the like, Ainsworth like, stuff I mean come on but Melbourne supporters look I know petty didn't report and things like that yeah. but the reason why we're talking about it he's involved again well again let's I mean I'll go back to it our game's tough enough okay you don't need to be a sniper. No. Uh, you know, you can go, go for your marks. You can still clean people up. And we'll get to a couple of the bumps on the weekend that one got rubbed out and one didn't. Yep. We'll get to that in a question from one of our listeners, viewers, um, in a few moments' time. But I, I just hate the all that humpo-bumpo yeah. rubbish that goes on. I'm the same. Throw the ball up, get in and get the ball. You, you know my pet peeve. I've said it probably multiple times in here. When you and I are in a marking contest, you beat me cold. Yep. And then some little... Piss hand, as I've called it. Yep, that's it. Who's not even in the contest that's comes it, the, over. The flea, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Push and shove and okay, piss off. Look, yeah, yeah. I hate seeing it. Yeah. I, I know it's part of the game. Oh, it's it's part of mental. Yeah. Uh, well, your, your mate Scarlett uh, had the instant reaction to that, didn't he? Yeah. When he clobbered uh, yeah. Ballantyne. Yeah. <laughs> he he well, jumped a punch without the jumper he gave. Yeah, well, that's all right. But, you know, <laughs> once upon a time, you actually, you know, you no. get a standing ovation for that. We're not, we're not promulgating violence. No. But uh, there's sometimes in. Yeah. A clip across the year may not be the worst thing that's happening. Anyway, um, a quick one. Uh, it's a, a hardy annual of mine. This The slippery you, you footballs and, and jumpers. Yeah. You don't like ju- the – what was it, the D's and lines? Too yeah, close too, for you? Too much red. Too much, too much red. Too much white on the back and too much blue. Yeah. It was – you don't need to have that. I, I don't mind having a, you know, a strip as long as it doesn't clash. Yep. That's all. I mean – you can do that, but uh, yeah, Melbourne. Melbourne it was their home game, so they can wear what they like, I suppose. But uh, uh, yeah, just it was hard. Can hard I? On the eyes. Can I? We're going to move it on. easy. Kept the umpires. Let's move on to the dogs. Let's start with um, in different, in different colours as well. The, as the Tom Liberatore. Yeah, no, let's get to that one. He had an ankle. Well, let's relate. get to the dogs. Let's, well, well, let's, let's roll let's, the dogs into this as well. well yeah, of, of course. But Libba, mm. that's not an ankle injury. Of course not. <laughs> like. Do you, do you know this is what should have happened, right? So uh, they all have media advisors. You've been down to footy clubs and things like that. Mm. Could have said to Bevo before he goes in for the presser, there's been an incident with Libba. We don't quite know what's happened at the bottom of it. or But don't come up with or say that it's an ankle injury. This is how you answer it. You ready? Yep. So you, you'd be the reporter. What's hey, that, what happened with Libba? Yeah, he's close. He, he seemed to have mm-hmm. collapsed. Look, I'm aware there's been an incident. I don't have the full details because it looks pretty serious. Um, we'll, we'll go away. We'll take a look at it. And we'll give you a full detailed report tomorrow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I just not, thought... Not, oh, he had an ankle. Well, to me, what it was is everything we're trying to get out of the game by saying, oh, no, he's not concussed. He's got an ankle, which means you'll be able to play next week. That's the code, right? That's sort of yeah. what everyone looks at. When you go, the guy collapsed on the ground... Um, the opposition player, Darcy Parrish, looked concerned for you. Carrying him up and don't say he had a, a sore ankle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and don't go to Libra and ask him, oh, yeah, I've got a sore ankle. He doesn't know because he was, he was concussed. Why would they put him whatever. up for a media interview they, post game? Well, then they said, well, I don't, I don't know, but that's part of it. You go, it just doesn't make any sense. Wait. And then you've got the AFL now jumping in and, and going over the top of the protocols. They said the protocols were. We're met by Liberatore. Well, yeah. clearly he's got something. Yeah. I mean, it was an incident where there was a, 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 a bump a couple of seconds earlier where he got the ball. But as you know, in those bumps, sometimes you might just get a bit of an elbow or you get a whiplash or something like that. To me, I mean, look, you know, again, from the cheap seats, well, not so cheap seats, I was sitting at home on the <laughs> yeah. nice couch. Um, but you watch it and you go, okay, something's happened. Yeah. He might recover, but let's have the... Yeah cool light of day to, to yeah. make these decisions. Just say, look, we want to get to the bottom of it. It doesn't, we acknowledge it doesn't Mate, look get great. get the doctor to come in and give the press conference on that situation. <laughs> so hang on a second, I get mm. Gary Zimmerman, who's been a doctor here for 25 years. Mm. Zim, up you go. Yeah. Can you answer this question? 
Yeah, we don't know what it was. There didn't seem to be any incidents. There was we'll a tackle the early tests. on. There was that bump. We've had a look at it. It didn't seem to be anything. Libba has no recollection of anything that he that hit. Uh, he did have a sore ankle, but that's about it at the moment. But we'll have a look and we'll come back to you. Yeah, we'll do all the tests. We'll check yep. his heart. We'll check his head. Yep. Everything. Yeah. But like, oh, he's just rolled his ankle and... Come on. All right, so let's get to the doggies. Um, yes. So they had dramas pre-season, which they came out and uh, PR'd it that everybody was okay. So Chris Grant got kicked upstairs because he was at war with uh, uh, with uh, Luke Beveridge, the coach. It's not a bad thing getting kicked upstairs. Well, <laughs> happens a lot in life. I guess. There's a lot of people failing up yeah, these failing days. Up, yes. Failing <laughs> up, yeah. Uh, so, so, but I don't know whether he failed up, but he just... They failed to have a... Retooled. A, what we have here is... Yeah, failed, <laughs> failed to communicate. Failed to communicate. <laughs> um, and then they brought in your old teammate. Matt Egan. Matt Egan to be the man. And uh, so you've got different situations. You've got Luke Darcy, who's the, the director of football out there as well, who's great friends with Chris Grant, but also uh, very close friends to uh, Luke Beveridge. In fact, was on the selection committee that appointed him. Mm-hmm. They won a premiership. There's a lot of love there for Luke Beveridge. Um, but it does seem at the moment there is a, a disconnect. Yeah. Um, as, as we said last week, they win the the Rising Star every week. They've got all these blokes picking up kicks and kicking mm. goals and doing all sorts of things. They just can't win. And uh, I I wonder, when you've got people like... Who are the three players that got out at the moment, the senior players? They've got, uh, to, they got Lobb, Dan, well, Daniel's out, McRae's McRae. been in and out, and then Bailey Dale was... And, uh, sub- and what, I've got a mental block on the halfback flank, the Australian little bloke. Yeah, Caleb Daniel. Oh, Caleb Daniel, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. you said that. Um, I've always found at a footy club, if you've got senior players, decorated senior players who are fit and they're not getting the game, the well gets poisoned pretty quickly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because if... The point you're making there is the point similar to I'm going to make. The messaging's confusing for me. Yeah. And it's a bit like uh, Libba's ankle in his head. Yes. There might, uh, be, there might be a logical explanation, yeah, so but you're not giving it to me in a logical way. Bevo, um, I, I could come with him on the whole, um, right, we need the best players for the position. I, I get that. Not just pick the best side. So as far as don't just put a midfielder because he's a good player in the forward line. We've got good small forwards in Waitman and uh, West. So pick that. So you got me there with a bit of the selection. I agree with that. Where I'm getting confused is, again, his, his presses. It was a complete riddle. It was, yeah. we're playing for the now, but we're playing for next week because the Saints have got tools. So we played that guy, but we're looking to the future, but the past is the past. Yeah. Uh, pardon? Now, when I look at the dogs, I'm just going to go through this. So you've got a player who's playing for you at the moment who we're having discussions, is he the greatest bulldog ever? Bonds on Pelly. Yeah, so over 100 years of history, we're we're discussing whether this guy is possibly, if he's not the greatest, he's best three. Yeah, well, certainly he's a player of his generation. Yes. Okay. You've got Libertore, who's in as good as form as he is in his career, but he's at the age of 30, 31. We've got... Two big guys on our forward line who, again, could be generational talents in Hagen and Darcy, we're describing as the unicorn. You throw in Norton, who is on such a big contract and has ability, but he could be best played behind Centre the Centre half back is where he needs to be. So that's a great thing. Yeah. You're weighing up whether he could be the best centre half forward or the best centre half back on your list. You've got the All-Australian Ruckman in English. Yep. You've got, You've got Waitman, who's as good a small forward, forward as you want. As you want, yeah. You, you mentioned two names who have been all Australians on your half back line. Yeah. And so, Johannesson, who won a Norm Smith medal. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> um, what, what are we doing here? Are, are we, we tr- shouldn't we be pushing the chips in and win now? Well, I, I, think, I think in these situations at football clubs, you can sometimes just get caught up in, in the echo chamber within. Uh, and I don't know, I'm not out, I haven't spoken to these guys, so I'm way out of this, but I'm just from, from my experience. And you can tell everybody that the, the ceiling here is mm. black until somebody says, no, it's actually white. Yep. And uh, yeah, you, you've actually, right. you're, not, you're not on. So I just think with, with the dogs at the moment, they need to, we said this about West Coast Eagles a couple of weeks ago, they were, they were just psycho babble, you know, and, yeah. and uh, you know, Adam Simpson, who I'm a big rap for, you know, we reported on what happened last year. People thought I was trying to death ride him. No, I just told you what was happening in the in the situation. But uh, you've got to actually get that clarity. Hmm. You, if you're confusing yourself at a press conference, you know maybe you're confusing everybody 
yeah. all around the same time or there's not a so, clear message coming through. So, so get rid of the psycho babble. Yes. Yeah. So out get, of, set, out get out set and go and play football. So out of that babble, okay, we'll push in for the now. All right, well, let's go down your path of let's let's look at the, the future. Well, then you've clearly said, well, the future doesn't include McRae, Daniel and Lobb. Yeah. So we're only going to play them if the, there's injuries. Oh, well, okay, then at least we're... At least we can see what you're trying to do. All right, let's turn turn. Because he, he might be going, sorry, jump in. He might be going, in the last couple of years, we've finished middle of the table with the talent we've got, which we've just highlighted. Yeah. Maybe a slight step back to then launch into into the top four. And That's look, a clear and, message. And don't forget, he knows. He's with them all the time. So he yeah. might be seeing bad habits. He might be seeing yeah. bad attitude. He might be saying, yep, yeah, just as you said, it's all very well playing these same, you know, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over yeah. and over again and getting Which I hoping get. for a different result. So maybe he's looking at it. But I'm a bit with you. I think that, you know, you go back to um, even 2010 at Collingwood where Mick Malthouse at about a quarter of the way into the season said, right, okay, these guys are out. And we lost... Josh Fraser, Tucker Lockyer, you know, a, a number of other really good players and in came all these young guys who came in and it, it transformed the team. Mm. I don't know. So yep. maybe maybe he's going down that road, but I think... Yeah, I reckon he, it well, sounds so, like he's stuck in between. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not putting words in his mouth, but... Well, I think it would be we fair to... We can take what he says to us. Well, okay, so we don't know, but yeah. let's have a guess. So we'll all be amateur sleuths here, but mm. if you've had to kick Chris Grant upstairs, then <laughs> you know there's probably somebody at the club who's going, told you... Um, and that's where things start to happen when there's mixed messages, mm. and you can say everyone's all in together. But if they're not, there, it, 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 it turns. Do you know what he down. does? He does eventually. Set, he has in um, in the past. He he does start the year where people go, well, this guy's now a forward, this guy's now a back, and then he settles it down, and they start to play better footy. So yeah. you you got to trust him. Well, it, it, well, the season will take care of itself. Yeah. So the next few weeks, Saints game is interesting on Thursday. They've night. got the Saints on <laughs> Thursday night on prime time. <laughs> Here we go. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, just with that, with those guys who were saying are, are in purgatory at the moment, mid-season draft, mm-hmm. uh, all of those players would be picked up and would go straight into any other side in the competition probably at the minute. Yes. Do we go to that? Because the, uh, the biggest worry of that is that you've got teams who are sort of deciding to rebuild and they cash their chips in and sides that are in contention will sell the grandstand to, uh, to get a couple of extra players in the hope that they could knock off a grand final. Yeah. So uh, that, that's the downside, but do we move them around? I'm I'm still undecided because I don't know the mechanics after you trade a player, like what, what actually happens. Like, do you, Well, they used to have it back in the day. June 30 was the deadline. Yeah, that's, but it, what, what happens after it? So like yeah. I'm saying, um, you know, what picks can you use? Is the player only, is then their entire contract then being rewarded at, at the new club? Can you renegotiate the contract? Like yeah. just all the little mechanics of it. But I'm a mm. bit of a believer that, Part of the art of football clubs is building your list for the year. Yeah. So if if you decide, hey, look, we're only going to go one ruckman, well, that's a bit on that's you when you, when yeah. the ruckman goes goes down. So that's poor list management. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I do like a little bit of uh, you get the twelve months as well. And yeah, and it actually encourages it. a bit of creativity too. Like you have a look at the Tigers, their first flag. It was Jack Rewalt and the fleet of Smalls. Yeah. And then Sean Griggs, a premiership backup, well, second Ruckman. Ruckman. Yeah. So a bit of creativity is involved. Yeah. Well, coach. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole Correct. idea. Yeah, so don't coach the perfect team. Coach the team you've got mm. and uh, and make the, the make it all work. All right, so uh, right, we'll leave the Bulldogs. Let's go to the Hawks. You can ask me this question. Oh, well, you said they were about to explode. They did. Well, which I actually <laughs> they blew themselves with up. <laughs> they had a bad week. No, nah, they had a bad <laughs> week. And... It's funny, everyone's saying that Hawthorne uh, have had their worst start to the season since 1970. Guess who came into the side after the round five? Who? The great Lee Matthews. Is he really? And then mm. they went, call mm. it 500 after that, 50-50. Yeah. What happened in 1971? They won the flag. They won the flag. Yeah. So I think they've got, they've got some injuries down at Hawthorne. Quite simply, that's the situation. When you're building with a young side, you don't need too many out. The best player in the club is hasn't played a game this year. Mm. And... Um, I yeah. like Sam Mitchell's um Yeah, I like the way he came after. out as well, yeah. He was clear, concise, he didn't shirk it. And I'll tell you what, he put every Hawthorne player on notice. If you're not doing everything in your power to become an elite AFL footballer, ooh, yeah, I don't think you're going to be wearing Hawthorne Well, he's going to get hard. I mean, they've got really good players mm. and a lot of them have come through the, the private school system. Mm. <laughs> not not Brody High. Not, not from Brody, but <laughs> this is me who's yeah. first went to yeah. Melbourne Grammar. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, 
yeah, I think that there's a little bit. I think there's a little bit in that. In that, and I'll go back to the COVID years again. That there has been, uh, you know, there's a big jump from being a really good player. I heard Ross Stevenson this morning say that uh, he his theory, and I often think this at times, is that a lot of players come into football clubs, AFL clubs, and have won the best and fairest every year, and footy's been so easy. Mm. And then suddenly you're coming up against guys who have been in the system, who are professional, who will rip you apart for the glory and to keep a million-dollar contract. Yep, uh, It's no longer Auskick. <laughs> and you don't get a McDonald's encouragement award. Mm. You get the strap if you don't go. And I think, I think Hawthorne may have had a... A good last quarter against Collingwood, who took their foot right off the pedal last week, and uh, they turned up, and that's what happens. If you turn up 10% off in a game of AFL football, you lose by 10 goals. Especially for a key position players. So yeah. with the underage football, there's the anti-density rules. Yeah. So if if I'm 17 and I'm 6 foot 5... Anti- what? Yeah. Anti-density rules? Yeah, so you've got to have a certain amount that of players. Have, yeah, in I know, back, yeah, in I know. But I think, think the density is in the people who make these rules. Are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, How about but, just play? But if you're 17 oh, yeah. and you're 6 foot 5 plus, there's not too many 6 foot 5 athletic kids that you're going to be playing against. Yeah. And they bully him. Well, but, I, look at, the, you know I look at the king boys who, you know, are great. Hmm. But do you know what happens in six months' time? Until they're not. <laughs> in six months' time. Yeah. Do you know the, the first person you're lining up has probably been AFL pre-season seven or eight. Yeah. He's playing for his life and contract. And there's people around you everywhere. The ball's not coming in. You don't just get to stand there and go, I'm just taller than you. Yeah, stand there and the ball <laughs> hits me in the head. Yeah, yeah so it, 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 the That's level the rises rapidly. It does. And I think uh, <laughs> Sam Mitchell's well aware of that mm. by the looks of things. All right, so Hawthorne, uh, the notes here say they've won oh, five look, quarters uh, they, of the year. They were oh, incredibly they're, they're, they're they were two poor. years away, Hawthorne. Don't yeah, they were incredibly poor. It was probably their worst result. Well, yeah. worst performance under Sam Mitchell. But Might not be the worst thing for them to get into the draft nice and early this year as well. They but I think, I think they've got the making of a very good team. Oh, Still. I, I keep writing down the, the amount of players that could go through their midfield. Yeah. They're deep. They're okay. They're Sunday deep. footy we touched upon. Mm. Uh, the note from our people here say where footy goes to die. Well, I think there's... They're going to play know, a game somewhere. Well, there's four teams didn't didn't have a, didn't win a game until <laughs> the weekend, so you're always going to have a couple well, of okay. ordinary so games. Let's play this one out, Rich Super Producer. Yeah. If they don't play at 4 p.m. on Sunday, when do they play? Well, they've got to play somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but uh, you know, I think, we're, as I said, we're, we're in a, a, a situation where, you know, don't forget it's not that long ago. Rich didn't like I got a phone call from the AFL saying, um, would you support us if we pulled Melbourne out of Queen's birthday? And I said, uh, no. no. And they said, will you support us if we get rid of Essendon out of Anzac Day after all the drug situation? And I said, uh, no, not over my dead body. And the same with Carlton and Richmond. Remember, Richmond just beat them for, for a hobby for 10 years. <laughs> for a hobby. You know? Just <laughs> let, things, let things sit, okay? Yes. And uh, we'll be okay. All right. Are we too loyal in football? We've sort of touched upon this. Uh, players move around. This is a question from uh, our, our listeners again. Mm. Um, are we too loyal? Do you like to see players move around? One club player? You, you're a one club player, but you're a two club director, aren't you? Oh, I've been a director of Geelong. Well, you know what I mean. You're yeah, Geelong, I've, you're I've been involved in clubs. Yeah. yeah. See, so, yeah, it's, it's a hard one. People, I got asked a couple of times, would I go and help other clubs? And I've always done that anyway oh. in the media. But but I don't know if I could ever turn up to a game and be sitting on the away bench against the Pies. <laughs> I just don't think that could happen. Um, more chance of you being Lord Mayor? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which has got more chance of being Carlton prisoner. But uh, no, just, just what, what do you point. think? What do we want to? I, I like the idea of the loyalty to a club, but, yeah, but within reason. Just I mean, if you're not getting a kick, out you go. Well, just so, the mechanics of it. A number of sports are where there's a lot of player movement. The actual clubs own the player. Players, it's yeah. an asset. Whereas players have greater control over their own destiny in AFL with their contracts. Yeah. So well, I could go. I want to trade Ed Maguire and you get the deal done with another club and I've been involved in these discussions where, okay, we've got Ed Maguire across, but the only thing is no, I've, got to, I, I've got to go ask you first. And you, you go, me, yeah. And you go, no, thanks. Yeah. There, there's the deal so that, done. That's, that's the biggest issue is that, that and I've always said this to the players into uh, conversations with the Players Association and it is be careful what you wish for. Hmm. You want to have the American experience and everyone sees the money and all that sort of stuff. They don't see what happens downstairs when you turn up on a Monday and your bag's packed. And you're off to Cleveland, you know, yeah. and uh, see you later. I think the best way to put it is, we still trade players, people. Yeah, they trade contracts. So you know what? You know we 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 are. We always talk about football being professional. I still think it's semi-professional, because we still talk about young players as if they're at Auskick. You know, that, that, not that they're you know professional players, and this is what's required. And the, the drug rule comes into mind on this. We're, we're always 
making excuses and, oh, you know, they're good guys. And, you know, it's half a notch up from playing for amateur football or, mm. or local football. Uh, no, this is serious big-time football, mm. but we don't quite get there yet. We, yeah. In so many ways, I still think that AFL football and sport in Australia, because we're in you know, such an amazing country where, you know, you can have it sort of all, all ways at the moment. And I think that that's the more professional you start to head into this, then the more professional it becomes. Yep. And the more cutthroat. And uh, I like it, the fact that there's still a, you know, a fair bit, a, a fair a bit connection of, piece. Well, to your yeah, community. I mean, I didn't. I wasn't president of Collingwood for for the corporate activity. And that's what I, that's what I did because that's what it was all going. But I, I love being around because of uh, the connections, the love of the club, the love of the supporters. You know, building things like what we could do here and. You know, over at the AIA centre, doing things in the community with the homeless. For me, that was that was always what it was. But if you want to come in and just be a killer, and and you know, a lot of people say that now. Why are they doing this? You know, you're just there to get a kick. It it, it that is a different fabric than what we've had in our community so far. So there's got to be a little bit careful that people who you know have done marketing one A somewhere. Uh, don't get completely in control of our game or you decide that that's the case and then you go fully professional. And that means hair testing, mm. drug testing, uh, and if you don't get a kick on a, you know, you're out the door. See you later, yeah. bye. I think it's great to look for inspiration at other sports, but don't lose our uniqueness. Uh, well, people so come find to find the balance. I think what happens is we always look overseas. People come to our game and go, how long has this been going on? Look at the crowd. Look at this stadium. What happens? Oh, they get paid pretty well. I'm not getting paid the same as the Americans, but pretty good lifestyle. I'll, yep. I'll cop a million a year and live in... in, in Jeez, you, know. you should have been my manager. Eh? Get a million a year. You should have managed me. After tax. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you play here. Look at this. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it and is. everything else that comes with it. And, you know, the facilities are great now. The coaching's, you know, great. Doctors, everyone's in there. It's never been better to be an AFL footballer than what it is at the moment. Ever. Hard to disagree with. All right. Right, Bartel Medal. Yes. Let's go to that one. Uh, Crown Resorts. Crown, here's where things get interesting. Well, I've, I've made this medal interesting because I'm going wider with votes, which makes it more interesting. Right. By the end of I'm, the I'm voting for Pride of Jenny. It's Pride of Jenny. Magnificent. What about that? <laughs> My goodness. Wow. Are you going to be watching the races or Collingwood this week? No, I'll be watching the pies. Absolutely. I'll yeah. be right here. In fact, I'll be. you're in my seat. <laughs> nice. I'll be sitting right in that spot I'll there. Make sure, I'll make sure I won't put my hands on the glass in yeah. front of you. No, don't you? We yeah, did that before. <laughs> yeah, look at this. You've left fingerprints all over my you glass. You really call me an idiot. Then, Come on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> One vote. Elliot Yo, who is magnificent. He had 15 clearances. Yeah. Harley Reid gets a vote. Yep. Um, I don't think there's going to be too much any votes coming West Coast way this year. So let's cash in. Yeah. And big Rowan Marshall. Yes. He was enormous there. The He's Saints nearly got over the line. He's a good player. Two votes. Sam Durham from the Bombers, who did a fantastic job on the Bond. He was great. Um, Cam Rayner. Um, he set, He's set ready f- to. He's ready to explode. He, he set the fire there against the Demons. And Lockie. should he be ready to explode somewhere else though? No. No, I'm just saying. What do you mean? Well, he'd be a good player at Richmond, wouldn't he? If you're going to recruit this year and do things. I'm surprised he didn't say Collingwood there. Well, he'd be a great player at Collingwood, but I just... Fit, fit under your sombrero of a salary cap. Well, we don't have one. We've got, we've got, everyone's right. <laughs> what are you talking about? Isn't that... You don't like it when it comes back your way, with a sombrero. Well, we actually pay it. <laughs> oh, so, uh, spare me. You know, we, haven't, spare. We, haven't cotton, we haven't cottoned on. <laughs> oh, come off it. Uh, well, hey, can you just move my car for me? Whatever you find in the car is yours. Uh, and the other two <laughs> exactly. votes is, is Lockie Whitfield. Um, it, his last yeah. 10 weeks and these first six rounds um, mm. for the Giants has been what we all thought was the absolute pinnacle of Lockie Whitfield. Without backing over poor old Lockie on this one, is he a good example of, the, of what should happen with the drug rules? Where he had some issues yeah, and he got himself fixed up. Yeah, because they avoided the drug test, the yeah, Giants yeah, at the time. Yeah. Everyone got their whack for that. Yep, and they did. Mm. And, and the whack resonated. Yes. This is what I'm saying. So I, I'd love to see Lockie I think he's a very good player. Well, uh, he's a great th- player, but I'm glad he was able to get himself sorted. And that's, that's why in... You know, again, turning left at Albuquerque on this, um, I agree with uh, what Paul Marsh said on the weekend in relation to the drugs, and that is, we want to be relatively punitive, but we don't want to be over the top. We want to give people the opportunity. We want to show some empathy. 
but we have to tighten things up a bit. It's a bit. A lot of these mm. issues that we're talking about, football's become too kumbaya. And mm. I'm not a head kicker by any stretch. I'm probably mm. the softest touch in the cape when it comes to these things. But you have to learn to say no and there has to be some stricture and structure in that, place. That's going to be the trick. Uh, find a, a nuanced uh, policy. Yeah, but that, if anything, you've got to nuance it to being a bit tougher than yeah. softer. I'll tell you what, not everyone's going to be happy wherever they land. Yeah, well, that's right. But uh, that's the idea of actually coming up with rules is that everyone's unhappy. Mm. Yep. Um, but not unhappy enough that they don't cop it. Three votes this week. The football cheat code, Jeremy Cameron. You cannot... I don't, I don't know how you're going to play on that guy. you just got to hope he's off. He's 197 centimetres. Yeah. He can run like the wind, kick the ball beautifully. If you're beating him inside forward 50, he'll just take you up to half back and go, let's have a foot race. Good to put a bloke like him into your side. Yeah, fantastic. Know how you get him under the... Sombrero. <laughs> Isaac Rankin gets three votes. Isaac, my man. Yeah, he was, How um, good's Isaac? He was amazing. You're giving three votes to all sorts of people now. Yeah, no, you only get one three vote. No, no. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 I'll cop you one vote and two no, votes, no. but not three. And three votes to Jake the Snake Waterman. He had eight contested marks. Kicked six goals. Yeah. West Coast first win. Come back from that stomach issue that he had last year. Yeah. Our leaderboard so far. This is why I do so many because it right. makes it more interesting. We got three players tied on four votes. Who's that? Matt Rowe, yep, the grass eater. Max Gorn, the Melbourne skipper, and Jeremy Cameron are on four votes. Fantastic. Uh, Bartell Medal. It's the hardest award to, to get win a read in on football. <laughs> <laughs> Changes every week. That's why. Uh, don't forget, we'll parlay that into the uh, Lexus Blackburn Award on yeah. Footy Classified on Wednesday night. I might. I was out there the other day, as I said. Yeah. I might have uh, been able to hit up a man, Andrew Moore, for another car. Who for? I'm going to work it out. <laughs> Maybe for the public. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I like to give things. You do? Yeah, I do. I'm a giver. Yeah. Uh, sounds, so Sounds like your favourite cafe too, the Lexus of Blackburn. Well, yeah. I wish it was a bit closer in for me so I could you know, get out there. But uh, it was great. I was out there the other day. Seriously, it's, it's, I'm not talking this up because he's obviously our friend and, and our associate on this, but uh, it's a really good setup they've got it there. Just, they're redeveloping it as well. Be able to see it from the moon, I think, by the time Andrew's finished out there. But uh, just real, not just not from Elon's rock, rockets. Just, exactly, <laughs> they're just fantastic cars out there. So um, yeah, so that, that that wraps up another edition. So we gave Channel Seven Racing a tick, and uh, and the Athletics on on seven. Um, I, I, I said I watched uh, my son that was playing on the weekend over in, in a practice match. How about this? So he's playing for Ohio State. They played a practice match at the, the Horseshoe, their famous mm. Horseshoe. Um, and it wasn't actually a match. It was sort of a scrimmage mm. and going through it. The coach was standing out on the ground. The media were out there shooting it. It was really great stuff. And they had 80,000 people <laughs> and the match was televised on Fox around America. The, the size of Ohio <laughs> State. I think I read somewhere about Ohio State and, and Michigan, their big rival. Well, the Michigan's on next yeah. week. They're, they're, yeah. they're practice on next weekend. Their budget for their football program, yeah. we're not talking about all the other sports, yeah. is the equivalent to 15 AFL it's teams. It's 160 million yeah. at Ohio State. Yeah. I went in their facility. Makes the MCG look like, you know, <laughs> Seabrook Reserve. It's and out of this world. It's <laughs> no, it's, Well, the MCG's great. The stadium, MCG stands up against anyone. Their stadium's great, but their, 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 their training setup is is just next level it's the future it is yeah well that's what we try to do with uh, you know when it's, it's not that long ago that people used to complain that uh, our, f- our f- footballs were getting soft because we had we built what was then the Lexus Centre at Collingwood and uh, people were saying oh yeah but Arden Street you know duck puts his jacket on a nail in the wall and all that. Well, it was never going to last that was it mm. I'm worried about I'll finish off on this because I'm starting to hear that they're, they're getting the slows on the redevelopment of the southern stand this is our heart and soul. And just like every good heart, mate, you need to get checked every now and again. And sometimes you've got to get the, the stent in there to keep it going. Got no money. Uh, well, we've got money. We just have to allocate it properly and okay. be smart about it. Okay. There's always money. Always money. There's always money. Mm. You know? It's been fun, Ed. There's money. <laughs> I know. <laughs> sometimes you've got to make sacrifices, though, don't you? Yes. Yeah, sometimes you occasionally might have to sell off a bit of cutlery here and there. Got a sense we might be hearing more of this story yeah. as we go along. <laughs> I've got to, I, I'm not going to go buy into it today because what I want to say is highly controversial. Right, save it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's not, not necessarily to do with football, it's to do with the state of Victoria. That is one great tease.
next time on Eddie and Jimmy. <laughs>